hari bersubuh. Tonight on First at Nine this Saturday, the 7th of October, 2023. No means no. President Ranil Vikramasinghe reaffirms his stance on international inquiries. There are human rights violations. We'll correct it within our country. No need to go outside. I don't believe in going outside. Monsoon effect. Over 54,000 affected due to inclement weather. Schools in Matra closed till Tuesday. Obey Vishwasi Dino Sinsurain. Then. This is Ada Verna First at Nine, live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to Ada Verna First at Nine. I'm Aditya Singh joining you live with the latest in Sri Lanka and around the world. Now, in your top story tonight, the District Disaster Management Committee stated that all schools in Mathur District will remain closed for the next two days following the prevailing inclement weather patterns. Meanwhile, 600 army personnel were deployed by the Sri Lanka Army in a bid to assist the flood and disaster relief activities in the Mathra district. According to reports, 54,436 individuals of 13,351 families in 13 districts are affected as a result of the torrential rains and inclement weather patterns. As the southwestern monsoons continue to affect the country, heavy rainfalls were reported in areas including western, Sabargamua, southern and northwestern provinces, while the Mathra district was reported to be the most severely affected by the inclement weather condition. Accordingly, 41,022 people were affected in the Gampa district alone, which was reported to be the most affected. Meanwhile, residents of the Atroli area were affected as housing schemes and roads remained inundated following the heavy rains. Against this backdrop, areas such as Akurasa, Panadugama, Porotota and Margoda continue to remain affected by floods. Meanwhile, the goods necessary for shops in rural areas of Kamrupitiya Matra were provided with the intervention of the District Disaster Management Coordinating Units. <laughs> Further, the District Disaster Management Committee reported that all schools in the Matra district will remain closed for two days next week amidst the prevailing torrential rainfalls and inclement weather condition. Accordingly, schools in the Matra district will be closed on the 9th and 10th of October. In the meantime, the Minister of Defence reported that 600 army personnel were deployed for flood and disaster relief activities in the Matra district. The District Disaster Management Committee further reported that the Nilvala River in Panudugama recorded 7.2 mm of rainfall as of this afternoon. The Irrigation Department further reported that the flood warnings issued for several lowlands of the Nilvala River will be in effect for the next two days. Accordingly, residents of the Akurasa, Aturalia, Kamrupitiya, Tihagoda, Malimbada and Matra Divisional Secretariats are urged to remain vigilant. Meanwhile, the Irrigation Department stated that owing to the inclement weather patterns, the lowlands surrounding the Gin, Kalu and Nilvala rivers and the Atanagal Reservoir will continue to remain affected by floods. Further, several main roads and byroads of Gaul, Baddegama, Bopipodala Divisional Secretariat and Nagoda areas were reportedly inundated due to heavy rains. Owing to the prevailing weather conditions, the water level of the Mausa Kale and the Castle Ray Reservoirs have increased to 80% and 65% respectively. Concurrently, several areas of the Colombo district continue to experience heavy rainfall, severely affecting the livelihoods of the general public. Under these circumstances, an amber advisory was issued for heavy rains of 100 mm in the western, Sabargamua, southern and northwestern provinces and in the Kandia and Nureli districts. Further, in the advisory for heavy rains released today, red alerts were issued for seven districts including Colombo, Gampaha, K. Gaul, Kalutara, Ratnapura, Gaul and Matara. Meanwhile, the National Building Research Organization has issued Level 3 red warnings for several areas of the country. Accordingly, warning Level 3 red alerts were issued to several areas of Gaul, Kalutara and Matara districts. Due to continued heavy rainfall, cumulative rain effects and the soil saturation of the areas, the issued landslide early warning message has been updated and extended to 14 hours p.m. tomorrow in the following areas. 
one in level three evacuation red notice was issued to Yakalamulla, Alpitia, Naguda, Imadu and Gaul for Gravit Division Secretary Division is called district. Ingiria, Valalavita and Matagama Division Secretary Division is cultural district. Pitabatara, Akuras and Hakmana Division Secretary Division is Matra district. One in level two alert number one was issued to Gaul district, Hamandra district, cultural district, Yagol district, Matra district, Radhamura district. In addition to that, one in level one watch yellow one was issued to Kalamu district, Gabha district, Hamadura district, cultural district, Kandy district, Yagol district. District. The Disaster Management Committee reported that 54,436 individuals of 13,351 families were affected in the 13 districts of Ratnapura, Kegol, Kalambo, Kalutara, Gampa, Matara, Gol, Nurelia, Putlam, Kurunagala, Jaffna, Batiklo, and Ampara. Meanwhile, the highest rainfall of 181.5 mm were reported from the Gol Hinidume area in the last 24 hours. Meanwhile, President Ranil Vikramasinghe says he does, he does not believe in international investigations to solve any issues related to human rights violations in the country, adding that those issues will have to be solved within the country. Addressing an event in Batiklo, President Vikramasinghe reiterated his expectation to implement devolution of power to strengthen key sectors of the country. The 150th anniversary celebration of St. Michael's College Batiklo was held today under the patronage of President Ranil Vikramasinghe. Let us now get together. Yeah, enough of divisions among us. We have fought among us. We have taken the country down to the bottom. We have fought in politics. We have taken it further down. We have gone through the worst experience where the country is broke. Never happened during the war. We, have, we didn't have petrol. We didn't have food. It affected everyone, every Sri Lankan, whether he was a Sinhalese or a Tamil or a Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu or Christian or an unbeliever. Now we have to get out of it. The government can prepare plans. We are discussing with the IMF how we get out, restructure our debt to get out of bankruptcy. But there is something we all have to do. We must go ahead as a united group. We have to go ahead. It's easier said than done. If you take to any, any community, ethnic or religious, they will have their problems, what they have suffered. Now, we have to learn to solve this. Firstly, we must solve the ethnic and the religious issues so that we are all Sri Lankans. So we, we are taking those steps. How shall we get together to go ahead? So I am going to talk to all the leaders and we will resolve the ethnic issues and the religious issues. You can't be fighting on these small things. Let's resolve it. That is the first one. Secondly, I am committed to devolving more power to the provincial councils. We can leave aside police powers. That can be taken up later when you want to. But a lot of powers have to be devolved. As I was talking with the Minister of Education, when I first was the Minister of Education and started devolution, there were 9,000 schools. I couldn't manage it. The management of 9,000 schools must be given to the provinces. We must look that the standards are maintained and discipline is maintained. Today I, we are talking, look at tourism. You can't have one tourist board doing this. The tourism of eastern province is so different from the tourism of western province. You must have provincial tourist boards. Look at agriculture, look at health. So we hope the period of next year will see devolution of more powers to the area. So you all can take part in your local area. So this is another step. Firstly, discuss the political issues and move towards resolution. Secondly, let's look at devolution and slowly let's move forward. You can't go at high speed. Then we let us function. If there are human rights violations, we'll correct it within our country. No need to go outside. I don't believe in going outside. But I think we have to do it here in our country. Then we need not be responsible. We can't be answering other people. But let's ensure that all these standards are met and we go ahead. Now following further updates on the President's stance on international inquiries, the President's media division is of the view that Sri Lanka cannot endorse the idea of international investigations into the island's internal matters. Issuing a statement expressing concern regarding an editorial of a newspaper and a newspaper report, the PMD stated that the Constitution of Sri Lanka and all other existing laws do not provide provisions for conducting international inquiries and added that carrying out such investigations would be a violation of the law. The President's Media Division has expressed concern regarding the editorial expected to be published tomorrow in the Nyanarte Pradipa newspaper tomorrow, along with the news report titled, An International Investigation Team is Needed for an Independent, Transparent and Thorough Investigation and Monitoring. Issuing a statement, the President's Media Division stated that on the 20th of April 2023, Minister of Public Security Tiran Alas delivered a report comprising 88 volumes and 48,909 pages prepared by the Presidential Commission, which probed into the Easter Sunday attack to Bishop Harold Anthony following a request made by the Bishop. 
The statement further mentioned that during a recent telephone conversation between Minister of Public Security Tiran Alas and the President of the Catholic Bishops' Conference, Bishop Harold Anthony, the bishop had mentioned that he is personally reviewing the report. The statement added that in light of this, President Ranil Vikramasinghe is preparing to engage in discussions with representatives of the Bishops' Conference. The PMD stated that they cannot endorse the idea of international investigations into Sri Lanka's internal matters and added that the constitution of Sri Lanka and all other existing laws do not provide for conducting international investigations. The PMD noted that consequently carrying out such investigations would be in violation of the law. While highlighting that a committee led by a retired Supreme Court judge has been established to conduct an inquiry and produce a report regarding the Channel 4 documentary, the government also intends to engage in further discussions on this issue once the Bishops' Conference have thoroughly reviewed the report of the Presidential Commission. Now, former Central Bank Governor Ajit Nivad Cabral says Sri Lanka announced its debt default against a backdrop where a $1.5 billion US dollar credit facility was expected from China. He made this statement before the Parliamentary Select Committee to investigate causes for Sri Lanka's financial bankruptcy when it was summoned again. Chinese liquid finance facility of 1,000 million USD and import credit facility of 1,500 million totally 2,500 million. Mang ekat obat mana mang ada gina wa ekat tiennah saksi. Teng samara kaya gina deng mewa borut kira kata wal kira. Reuters ulti kira. China is considering offering 1.5 billion credit facility to Sri Lanka and a decision to is expected soon. Obat mana lahan mana mewa ekat tiennah ekat ayi mewa kena wal mewa nanti kira mana. Alu teng apa ekotus. Sama apa itu mah mewa ukuma enti bici dewa. Mahabank adi kati beraya kira nama. CBSC governor sees good progress in negotiations with the China with China on debt restructuring. Again, debt restructuring is in me China take a talk about the problem. Kira kira, ini orang China yang naik ni mana? China ni kata nukar, naik pelarian mana announce kira. Eko kau mesti beri. Nego kuman terus naik kira kira ni problem ni. Ani ekai. Dedas, visi dekik di, abil lah dawasin dekik, mereka announce kira. Ahan ni balai natu. Again, China yang macam sahaksi tiad di sali ni tiada kira. Now, meanwhile, President's Chief of Staff Sagla Ratnayaka commented on the procedure of Aswasima program, adding that the program will assist in identifying and recording the families living under poverty. The President's Chief of Staff further revealed that all programs launched to resolve the issue of poverty will be based off the data recorded as such. <laughs> Now, the third Bangladeshi Film Festival commenced last evening at the Tarangani Theatre at the National Film Corporation in Colombo. The film festival, organized by the Bangladeshi High Commission in Colombo, showcases cinematic masterpieces of Bangladeshi cinema. Addressing the opening ceremony of the event, Bangladesh High Commissioner in Colombo, Tariq Muhammad Ariful Islam, says this festival aims in improving connectivity between the people of Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. According to the Bangladesh High Commission, the festival will be held for three days and will conclude in the evening tomorrow. Now in other local news, a former commander suspected to be involved in the recent shooting in Talangama was reported gunned down during a confrontation by the police special task force. Meanwhile, 16 kilograms of Kush cannabis and 1 kilogram of methamphetamine, also known as ICE, worth 122 million rupees, were taken into custody by the Sri Lanka Customs. With that, here's a look at more news across the island in brief. 
As reported by the police, Special Task Force, a former commando suspected to be connected to a recent shooting in Talangama has reportedly been shot dead. Accordingly, the deceased was reported dead following a confrontation in Hangwella earlier this morning. According to reports, the victim died upon being admitted to hospital. The police Special Task Force also recovered a hand grenade and a motorcycle with fake number plates at the site. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka Customs have detected three wooden packages containing Kush cannabis and methamphetamine known as ICE at the baggage clearing division in Paliagoda. Accordingly, 16 kilograms of Kush cannabis and 1 kilogram of methamphetamine have been impounded. The contraband, meanwhile, is estimated to be worth around 122 million rupees. Further, a fire erupted at a factory belonging to a private organization in Urugodavatta earlier today. Seven fire engines were deployed at the site to douse the flames. However, the cause of the fire has not yet been revealed. The Sri Lanka Navy, meanwhile, has apprehended 24 people engaging in illegal fishing activities during a special operation conducted yesterday. The operation further led to the seizure of nine dinghies, one cab, diving equipment and unauthorised fishing gear. Accordingly, the 24 persons along with the dinghies, the cab and the unauthorised fishing and diving gear were handed over to the Kuchavili and Vakare Fisheries Inspector and the Fisheries and Aquatic Resources Department for onward legal proceedings. For the latest local business developments, join us on the other side of the short commercial break. Stay with us. Kodamada Perali Karana Balapuru Ankarya Mahindra Yuvo Timo Vitin Welcome back. Now on the economic front, Sri Lanka has recorded a marginal decrease in workers' remittances in September 2023 compared to August 2023. Accordingly, workers' remittances recorded in September were at 462.4 million US dollars as opposed to August 2023, during which the inflows reached 499.2 million US dollars. However, the cumulative figure for January to September 2023 has improved and stood at 4.3 billion US dollars. This is an increase of 68.8% compared to the corresponding period in 2022. Now, with more news on the economic front, Central Bank Governor Dr. Nandalal Virasinghe says that Sri Lanka can expect a recovery in the private sector credit by the end of this year due to the seasonal demand for credit. Addressing the media briefing following the monetary policy review, the Central Bank chief said that new monetary policy board, which consists of two external experts, has introduced additional expertise to the monetary policy decision-making process. When do you think that there will be a sort of a meaningful recovery in private credit? So we have already seen a small recovery. I think that's most probably the recovery is slower when people are expecting interest rates to come down further. There are the tendency is not to get new credit, still trying to reprice their obligations and bring down the financing cost. That's what is happening, I think, right now. But once interest rates are settled to a certain level, then and also economic activity picking up, then we're going to see people start increasing investment, more consumption. Uh, with that credit flow, we will uh, turn around. This is a good sign that it shows the credit contraction and the recovery is that it shows the monetary policy is responsive and interest rates decline has seen uh, at least the, the reduce the contraction and turn around to positive territory. I hope that will continue in the second half and next year at a faster rate. Definitely, I think it will have to be much positive. Even I think last quarter of this year, we, we probably the seasonal demand towards November, December, we can expect further expansion in credit. This is the first monetary policy under the new framework, monetary policy board. So in the process, is there a difference between under the new setup and the previous setup in arriving monetary policy decisions? Arriving decision is uh, some technical process. It's same. We have a monetary policy board appointed. We have two external experts. I think Dr. Dushim Virakorn, Executive Director of IPS, and Professor Priyank Dunusinga from the University of Colombo. They have been appointed as uh, two external experts to the monetary policy board in addition to governing board, members of the governing board. Plus, two deputy governors are also members of the in Montreal's board, which has technically 11 members compared to earlier five members. So that has brought in additional expertise into Montreal's policy decision-making process with more technical competence now in the process. There's a much better decision-making process when it comes to Montreal policy, which is much more technical process, I think. Do you all assess the pressure on the rupee because of uh, the monetary policy easing? Under this framework, flexible limitation targeting means exchange rate regime is a flexible exchange rate regime. Exchange rate would be taken by market demand supply and all fundamentals. So that's the framework. But we are trying to maintain the inflation through interest rates. Obviously, 
We take into consideration all the macro factors, including balance of payments, the fiscal situation, growth, growth output gap, future inflation, future pro- the growth projections, future balance of payments. All are taken into consideration when a decision is made. It's not only the inflation and output gap. So all things are being considered when decision is made. About the staff level agreement, is it will it be before this IMF talks or after? Is there any kind of timeline? It like will that? happen soon. I think I don't think no one can give a specific date, but I am confident that it will happen soon. Now, DFCC successfully concludes its Summit English program for the fifth year running in collaboration with Gateway Education Services Private Limited. Meanwhile, HNB launches its highly anticipated Sing the Giftober campaign to entice mine account holders to save more in celebration of Children's Day. With that, let's take a look at the latest developments in Sri Lanka's corporate sector in today's segment of Corporate Affairs. In steadfast commitment to empowering Sri Lanka's youth with essential English language and soft skills, DFCC Bank completed its Summit English program for the fifth year running. The program reached a remarkably successful conclusion with students receiving their certificates at special award ceremonies conducted by the respective DFCC Bank branches, through which 81 students were honoured for their dedication and hard work for the batch of 2022. DFCC Summit English is undertaken with the support of Gateway Education Services Private Limited, an education services partner who conducts the study program. Meanwhile, HNB PLC announced the return of its most anticipated annual campaign, Sing the Gift Obber, in celebration of Children's Day. Anchored by a slew of gifts to promote savings culture among mine account holders, the annual campaign will run for 45 days till the 17th of November. Releasing a corporate disclosure pursuant to Section 7.8 of the listing rules of the Columbus Stock Exchange, People's Leasing PLC informs that Tishan Manjulavil Laligi has been appointed as an independent non-executive director of the company recently. Tishan Villalagi is an attorney at law with over two decades of experience in the private bar while also serving as a non-executive director of People's Bank where he contributes to several board subcommittees. And with that, we wrap up tonight's edition of Adhaderna First at Night. Stay in touch with us on www.adhaderna.lk for the latest developments around the clock. Thank you. Have a great night. For news and information you can trust 24 hours a day, visit adhaderna.lk.